Hi, welcome to Beyond Politics. I'm Catherine Clark. Calgary MP Michelle Rempel is one of the new breed of young federal politicians elected in 2011. But don't let her age deceive you. She is young, but she is also personable, and she's smart, and she's proved herself on the floor of the House of Commons. Michelle Rempel joins me now to talk all about life beyond politics. Michelle Rampel, welcome to Beyond Politics. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Catherine. You have had a really busy past 10 months or so. Yes, I sure have. Yeah. Although reading through your bio, frankly, you've had a very busy uh, first three decades, frankly. It's been, you, you are not someone who sits around and, uh, and lets life pass you by. Well, that's a compliment. You know, it, it is amazing how fast time passes. Um, but yeah, it has been really busy. Yeah. Give me a sense about um, about growing up. Were you this kind of a kid when you were growing up too? Um, you know, I, I had a family. Uh, you know, my parents really encouraged me to succeed. Um, I, By doing what? Like what kind of? Um, you know, just just sort of instilling those values of hard work and the importance of hard work and um, the importance of serving your community just from a young age right. and what that means and. Um, so yeah, I guess I was uh, that sort of a kid, um, really active, um, you know, music when yeah. I was younger and uh, then in community service and that sort of stuff. So it's something that was instilled in me from a young age for right. sure. And did you grow up in Alberta? In Manitoba, actually. Okay. Yeah, Winnipeg. Right. And um, you moved out, um, uh, was it for work or for school that you moved out to Alberta? Yeah, Wagons West uh, for, for work. <laughs> okay. Um, started working basically right out of high school and right. I, I was never a full-time student. I was always a working student. Yeah. And then when my husband and I both finished our degrees, uh, we had job opportunities in numerous parts of the country and in the U.S. and Calgary was really a draw for us. Sure. It's a pretty dynamic place. It sure it's is. No question. You know? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's got such an interesting um, mix of uh, a business and a social scene, and there's a lot. There are a lot of young people. Yeah, it's a really dynamic place to be. You know, you're you're so spot on. What what really drew us to Calgary and why Calgary's home is is, is that spirit that you're describing. It's it's young. It's entrepreneurial. And and when we got out there, you know, you're talking about that sort of drive to succeed. Mm. We've we've made so many friends and. Um, yeah, and just the type of people that you consider lifelong friends that right. have really enriched our lives and it kind of motivates you to do the same right. with them. So um, give me a sense about this going through university thing and being a, a working student. Mm -hmm. um, you're a piano player, so you're a pianist, <laughs> and you have been for a long time. Yeah, one of my hobbies. Okay, and it has it become a hobby? Because I don't know about, I think most people are forced by their mothers or fathers <laughs> to take piano or violin yeah. or the flute, and they do it because they're told that that's what they have to do every Tuesday. Was it really something that you wanted to do yourself? Uh, it was. Really? Um, you know, I think music um, and the arts are so important because right. They do enrich you as a person, and you know they do enrich the community, and, and they they speak to quality of life, and you know for that reason I I always cherish the time that I spent you know playing, but it, it definitely is a hobby now. It has been for about ten years, and uh, you know I think as you move on in life you have to make choices on what you spend your time on. Sure. <laughs> and uh, you know once I started uh, going to school, I was working full time, going to school full time, right. and things have to drop off. Yeah. So were you also playing piano to get yourself through school? Uh, the first year I did, yeah. um, but uh, I, I ended up in a sort of a quasi-internship, I guess, right. um, at the University of Manitoba. Uh, I just worked with some phenomenal people at a really young age in their faculty of medicine and yeah. in their uh, industrial liaison office, which is the office that commercializes technologies. Yeah. So I was able to, at a really young age, get exposure to some pretty big business deals and that right. sort of stuff, which was pretty neat. Yeah. So um, it's it's become a hobby that I assume is more of a relaxing element for you and a busy schedule and a pleasure to others around you, the, the piano aspect. But can you play when you're in Ottawa? Oh, uh, even at home is a stretch. Uh, my 
actually my mom just sent that the piano out for us uh, really? about, about three years ago. Wow. So it's um, the last ten years has really been about building my career. Sure. Yeah. It's funny because you say that, and, and you seem to have had. Um, you know, most people in their 20s, yes, they're building their career, but it's not in a very, um, necessarily a very specific way. You know, they, they finish school, they look for work, they find a job, and then they kind of build their way slowly up, and they may get their act together on having a family or, I mean, just, you know, having a partner. Um, but you seem to have really had your act together from a young age. You were married young, for one thing. Mm -hmm. I, and um, you were 23, 24 when you got married? 22. Oh, see, that's young. Wow, that's super young. So you were married young. You had a, you had a pretty busy career yeah. uh, young, and then you made this decision to enter politics young. Um, have you just approached life that way from the beginning? Are you just that kind of a person who's just focused and driven and off you go? You know, to that comment, you know, you know, sometimes I'll get the comment of, oh, you're so lucky, right? You've had all these opportunities, and, and that's true. But, you know, I, I've sort of subscribed to the philosophy that luck is where opportunity meets preparedness. And, um, you know, being married young, I've had a, you know, a sort of a running mate, if you will, someone right. that's also worked very hard in his career. And um, I, I've, I've been fortunate to have a lot of people who've invested in me professionally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you're talking about you know, focus and purpose. I think that you can have drive and and not necessarily a specific destination in mind if you're willing to be shaped by people that want to invest in your life. Right. And I've had some really significant mentors in my my professional career. Right. Um, that I think contributed to the fact that I do have a lot of professional experience at a young age. And talk to me about the role that your husband plays in that because you talk about him like a, a running me. Um, but if you're too busy people running two um, busy careers and building two busy careers, sometimes people can become at odds with each other rather than growing together. How have you guys managed to do this and grow together? Well, I think it's a un mutual understanding of each other's goals. I mean, uh, my husband's in a very, very technical, uh, demanding field that he's had to a lot of, invest a lot of time into his education. Right. So what does he do? He's an actuary. Okay. A lot of people are like, what is that? Yeah. Right? But, okay. Um, well, so what is that? Um, essentially, it's, it's someone who evaluates risk for a living. Okay. And that sounds, um, you know, very technical, but it's a lot of statistics and economics and finance. So right. he basically builds out pension plans. So you can imagine the romantic conversations <laughs> that we have building oh, up yeah. pension plans. Well, and we're having a lot down. of interesting discussions at the table. Yeah, nowadays. absolutely. Pension plans. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, so do you guys actually talk about this kind of stuff at the supper table? You when know, you ever get to have supper together? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, you know, the last few months has been a big change yeah. for us. Uh, so you, you do have to maximize the time that you have together. But. Um, uh, even even at home, you know, it's it's a lot of work in the riding right now, mm. uh, especially it being my first term. So right. just trying to find that balance. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit then about the decision to run. Yeah. Because um, you 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 filled the riding that Jim Prentice used to yeah. represent, and um, I wonder if you had actually been considering a run in politics at all at any level before uh, he announced that he was leaving politics? Now, that's a great question. Um, you know, one of the things that has always struck me about Canadian politics is that regardless of your political affiliation, anybody can really get involved and make a difference at any age, any gender, any demographic. It's just the way our political system is set up. So, uh, you know, when we moved to Calgary um, in, it would have been 2003, 2004, uh, my husband was really in the middle of his education. He was quite quite busy, and I wanted to make some friends and stuff. And one of the campaigns was going on, so I thought, hey, I'll just, you know, see what the the process is like. Right. And I ended up on, you know, Diana Blonsky's campaign team. Right. I had been peripherally involved in Manitoba, and I just found this really welcoming, warm group of people who shared, you know, similar sort of concerns about the country that I did. And at a very young age, I felt like you know, my, my thoughts and my views on policy um, could contribute to something. So there was that sort of instant draw for me. Right. 
Um, so, you know, what I found was that the party really nurtured me from that point onwards. You know, uh, Diane encouraged me to run for presidency of her board, which I did. She was a great mo mentor. Um, and, and someone who's done politics differently as well. So. Very much so. Uh, you know, Diane's philosophy, you know, and I've said this before, you know, this is just my, my observation, she's very much focused on, on local representation and okay. ensuring that those local issues are brought forward. And she's done that over a really long, uh, successful career. So, you know, when, when, um, when, Mr. Prentice, uh, when Mr. Prentice's seat opened up, um, I had the network and I was prepared to run. So again, it's sort of that luck is opportunity meets preparedness yeah. sort of thing. And you know, did you want to run though? Um, I think it was an option for me. It was okay. an option that was on the table. Yeah. Um, and you didn't view it as a career killer. No, I mean, I think anyone at any point in their career needs to think about what politics means for their life mm -hmm. in general. I certainly really enjoyed the job I was in at the University of Calgary. It was a dream job. It was phenomenal and it was really hard for me to leave that role. Yeah. I worked with a really great group of people and was involved in their research and development program. Just a phenomenal university. So there was that sort of pulling at me as well. Um, but, so uh, what was the yeah. tipping point then? Because you've got this great job. Yeah. It keeps you in a great city. You're near your husband. Mm -hmm. And then you have this opportunity that comes along that would be fascinating, um, but that means you're away a lot. It's a lot of work, and um, you're on planes back and forth all the time. So what made you think, yeah, this is the right path for me right now? Well, you know, you talked earlier about Calgary being this young, dynamic, you know, energetic city, and it really is. And that's sort of the core of my answer is that, you know, I live in a community that was so profoundly good to me and I, I think that one of the greatest ways to give back to your community is to serve and you know that can look that in, in numerous different ways right you can you can volunteer you can be involved in your community in so many ways but I think to stand for public office is one of the greatest ways that you can serve your community and you know some of the things that you're talking about you know uh, they're, they're, they're part of, of a great privilege. So, you know, when the opportunity came up to say, I could have the opportunity to stand up for one of the most vibrant, dynamic, thriving communities in the country right now, right. was really appealing. Um, I, I'm always struck by the diversity and the enthusiasm um, of, of the folks that I represent, regardless of their political stripe. People really care about the community and right. want to see things better, and I wanted to be a part of that. Yeah. And what your husband say when you brought it up? He's always been very supportive. Okay. So, so he wasn't like, wow, no, this is such a bad idea. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've never felt that. Mm -hmm. um, the discussion was, you know, very much around Okay, how do we win a conservative how nomination? How am I going to make supper? Yeah, well, you know what? That's a great and point. I put a can in the microwave. You know, he's going to get angry at me for outing him. But I mean, one of the biggest challenges we had after the election were like the mounting boxes of Little Caesars pizza came home. I'm like, so, uh, you know, there there are life changes. So warm up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well. Yeah, there. And you have cats too, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, that that yes. must have been a shock to the cat. They are. They, um, uh, you know, I come home on the weekend, and anyone who has cats, and for those of you who don't, I mean, forgive me, but they have these behavioral sort of like they'll shun you for a little bit, yes, and then we've heard this about cats. Yeah, I think that's why there are cat people and dog people. Yes, yes. So uh, they've adjusted, but um, but they shun you for the first bit that you're home. Yes, they certainly do. Okay. So by the end of the weekend, do they readjust? Yes, and then they see the suitcase, and they're like, oh, you know. But yeah. You don't like yeah. you again. Yeah. Wow. So um, one of the other things that interested me, um, because I've seen firsthand the interest in politics in young blonde women, is what the reaction was to you when yeah. you became a candidate. Did people, um, did people treat you with respect as a candidate, or did you have to face some of that while wow, she's young, she's too young, and she's too pretty to be able to do the job right? Um, I certainly didn't feel that from members of my own party. 
at any point in time, even other folks that were considering the nomination. I've, I've never felt that because I think that I've, I, you know, you, you build enough of a reputation within your community. I've, I've never felt that ever. Yeah. I think there, there was a little bit of that during the campaign from some of my opposition um, uh, campaigns. I, I, that, was, that kind of shocked me a little bit because, you know, I think partly what can shock is that we've grown up in an age Absolutely. where we just don't face it. I was just going to say that to you. Um, you know, you, st you stole the words right out of my mouth. Uh, you know, I've, you, you know, you must feel this too. Uh, we are fortunate because there there are a lot of women who have have come before us who have have worked to create that atmosphere. So when you encounter it, it's, it it is somewhat offsetting. It's kind of like, wow, this is out of context. Um, but I certainly have not felt that since I came here. I mean, you get the odd comment about, you know, what you're wearing or that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. but um, certainly within my caucus, I've felt supported and um, not evaluated on my appearance. And how about in the House of Commons itself? Is, do you find that it's a fairly diverse um, group of Canadians in the House of Commons, or do you see yourself as a bit of an anomaly because you are young? Because frankly, the truth of the matter is we still do view right or wrong politics as the domain of um, uh, older white men. And I don't believe that's a proper uh, perception of politics anymore because it has changed so fundamentally. But I wonder how you feel coming from the floor of the House of Commons when you're looking around you at your colleagues. What are you seeing? You know, I'm going to push back a little bit on that because I, I do think the perception of politics has changed in this country. So, you know, when the, you know, and I'll get to that in a second, but when we talk about, you know, why, how, why what are the barriers to women getting involved in yeah. politics and are there barriers, I think we first need to acknowledge that, you know, women are part of politics now. Like, I remember getting asked during the campaign this very question. And I'm thinking, you know, I was just at an event the night before, and I looked out in the audience, and I saw me, like, right. engaged women who were either volunteering on campaigns or out to discuss policy or that sort of stuff. So I think women are engaged in the political dialogue in this country. As far as diversity in the House of Commons, you know, certainly, I, what, that's one of the great joys of this job, mm -hmm. is that you get to work with, you know, 307 other people who represent every other part of this country. Mm -hmm. And the, the face of, of government is changing, it has been changing, and that's quite exciting. Is it tricky to work in an environment where you're not just going to captains of industry and saying, as you, I think you were doing in your previous job and saying here is how we can have a wonderful partnership between your, your industry and our academic field. Yep. Um, so that you're, you're working with people, you're, you're soliciting their, their help and their, and their funds. But in this case, you're working with people who are coming from a really different place who may have a totally different world view, who may have a different reason for being involved in politics. Um, how is it different for you going to work every day now than it used to be when you were in Calgary? Um, you know, I, I think that's one of the perks of the job, uh, is to be able to talk to other people who have differing pin opinions of your own and um, have robust debate and really think about and, and be challenged about what your world view is. Um, and think about, okay, well, how does that impact the policy that we're developing? You know, right. there, are, there are other groups of people who think differently, um, but there are, you know, groups of people who support our position. So it's this very interesting sort of fluid process. And uh, again, part of it is I've, I've been really um, quite happy to work with a group of people in my caucus, especially our class of 2011 who have this diverse set of professional backgrounds. Right. And you just have these great policy discussions with them that sound so profoundly, you know, geeky, but it's really, <laughs> really cool. And uh, it, it is a perk of the job. Yeah. So are you having these policy discussions um, at work, or are you actually going out at night, too, and, um, and being able to have these policy discussions in a, in a more social environment as well? I think both. Yeah. I mean, one of the things about, I management consulted for a while, so anyone who's consulted or worked in a law firm, you yeah. know what those hours look like, sure. right? And I, I'm trying to, I, you know, you, you kind of find that pace out here too, like, you know, when you're, when you're sitting out, uh, when the house is sitting, uh, it kind of, the week melds into this one amorphous blob. Right. And uh, so, you know, you do have to find time to socialize and that sort of stuff yeah. and, and get your commitments done. So it's a mix of both. 
um, but the good thing is is that you, you you end up dialoguing with people on your committee when when you're in the house there's all sorts of opportunity for that so it's it's pretty neat to have the best of both worlds. Right. And can you talk across partisan lines? Yeah, like I there? think so. I mean, yeah. obviously there are, you know, there are lines where, where you have your platforms and, and your policies and whatnot, but yeah. I certainly have uh, built a great deal of respect, uh, if not agreement on policy, but for some of my opposition colleagues. And, you know, there's a saying that iron sharpens iron. So you should be able to defend your policy stance and, and talk to your opposition colleagues and, and have that discussion. Yeah. Um, I was reading some of your quotes from the House, and um, you can deliver a pithy line like the best of them. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was thinking about how um, you know sometimes people have an expectation of someone they stand up and you you just don't you don't necessarily think anything's going to happen, and then all of a sudden you get your head. Uh, spun around and I think you are that person it's almost as though you were born um, to be in the house oh. <laughs> did you think as a child that you would be in politics um, you know it, it's interesting you bring that up I, I did a few I, I'm trying to get out with a lot of schools in my writing so I, I try and talk to kids about being involved in politics right. and I think a lot of a lot of our, our youth don't have that in the back of their head as an option. It's certainly something, to answer your question, that I think I did. Yeah. And I think it's something that we should be instilling in youth is that, you know, um, not only do you have the right to run, and it's something you should consider as a career option, but as a Canadian, you have a right to be involved at any age. So that political engagement is just something that's so important to me, and uh, it's, it's exciting to be young and in politics. So what can we be doing differently to help young Canadians understand that politics is a career option, just like law or medicine or, um, you know, working in television, that it's, it's also a career option. It's not just something that you fall into or that you um, shun. You know, I, I certainly take it as a, as a personal responsibility. Uh, as I said, I've really had a a great deal of fun going out and talking to, you know, grade sixes and grade nines. Yeah. And, um, seeing the light bulb go on and, and, and answering their questions, which are unbelievably good questions. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple times I've been like, Evan Solomon, is that you? <laughs> <in the audience?" laughs> um, and uh, so I think it's just having that dialogue uh, that, that this is an option to all Canadians. And, you know, our, our, our democracy is something that's so precious, um, not just in this country, but internationally, when you look at the ability to engage that it, I just absolutely believe it's something that we should all be encouraging youth to get involved in. You have a couple of other um, not so hidden but perhaps not particularly well known talents. One is that you're apparently a sommelier. Is that right? <laughs> Another hobby. Okay. Um, yeah. That's yeah. good. You're covering the bases of the drinking and the piano. You're doing it. It's a great party. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I you know, I grew up in a home with uh, uh, you know, a family who had a great appreciation for wine, and um, uh, so again, it was it was something that uh, I just sort of picked up as a hobby. Is it a hard process? Oh, the homework's I mean, really yeah. hard. Yeah, all that drinking. <laughs> yeah. it's tough. No, it's um, <laughs> it's it's actually it's phenomenal to learn about um, how wine is tied to so many uh, countries' culture. You know. Yeah. Uh, and certainly here in Canada, I mean, we, we've got this emergence of a, a new, relatively new industry. Yes, yeah, and winning awards. For absolutely. Yeah. So it's, um, it, it's, it was exciting to learn about, you know, these long-standing viticultural practices and that sort of thing that's really, you know, shaped regions in yeah. certain ways. And, and now it's exciting to see, to have that knowledge and, you know, go visit and um, have a different perspective on what's happening in the Okanagan or in the Niagara Peninsula. It's sure. kind of cool. You um, also have a sister living here, am I yes, right? I do. That makes it easier. It does. I'm so close to her, and um, I'm so proud of her. And you know, it, it's it's funny because uh, you know I think my my our parents kind of look and go, how did you both end up yeah. in politics? Sure. And uh, she it's is neat. working on the hill as well yes. in the Senate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And younger, older sister? She's younger. Okay. Yeah. So do you spend a lot of time together? We try to. Um, her schedule is pretty full as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think 
in any gig, not this, just, not just this gig. You you have to make time for for friends and for family. So we try and prioritize that. Okay. So given that you have, uh, I have the impression that you're someone who doesn't like being bored. <laughs> um, do you do anything with your downtime in particular? I mean, are you someone who, um, other than your piano playing and your uh, sommelier uh, classes or um, offering wine testing to other people or you're, you know, studying up on the issues that you uh, deal with in the house and your work on behalf of constituents, do you do things? outside of politics that allow you to have that access to a normal life? Um, you know, this was, it's not just for someone who's in politics who's busy. I think that it's that work-life balance that's for anyone who's busy in whatever profession you're in. Right. So, uh, you know, when I was working in intellectual property management, when I was managerial consulting, um, you're busy all the time with really stressful files. And my out was always my community service projects. Um, I did a lot of work, um, Children's Wish Foundation, my local community association, uh, numerous different charities and you know it was sort of that ability to translate your professional toolkit into something that has an impact on your community. So now it's um, taking that in the leadership position that I have in my community and trying applying it maybe outside of a political context. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of neat to be able to do, to go and, you know, attend charity events and raise funds for people with a different context. It's, right. It's rewarding. Um, are you enjoying it so far? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first day I, I got to go into the House of Commons. And you stand there really with a sense of um, profound appreciation and privilege to be a young woman who gets to stand up in a democratic country and have a say for, you know, over 100,000 constituents in a vibrant city. Like, it's just, um, it is such a privilege. So even on days when it's busy or, you know, there's bad days in the media or whatnot, um, to be able to stand up and vote is something that is so unique and, and such a privilege that, yes, absolutely, I'm enjoying it. How do you deal with the public scrutiny? Has it been difficult for you to adjust to that? Um, you know, you, you definitely, you know, you hear the, you hear the, and you know this, you have to grow a thick skin. That's the old adage, right? And it gets easier. I, I mean, I, I think the trick is um, you have to learn to put aside certain comments, but you, you, you can't grow such a shield that you're not um, able to take constructive feedback okay. and criticism. So I think that's the challenge, yeah. is finding that sort of balance, right? Is right. what's the stuff that's just out there to throw you off your game? And what's the stuff that's out there that you really should be listening to? And I think that's the challenge of the legislator that everyone faces. So if you had to make the decision again, you'd still have decided hands down to run? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a real pleasure to chat with you. And, and you as well. I thank you for taking the time to be here today. Thanks for having and me. And I know we will all watch uh, your political career with interest as it continues to grow. Thanks so much for your time. Michelle. Mm -hmm.